Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the London Indie Underground, London's only independent music podcast showcasing some of our area's most talented artists, bands, and personalities. Thanks for tuning in. Joined, as always, by my co-host, Mr. GB, Gary Begner. Hello. How are you, buddy? You're doing well, and I'm not going to do the vampire thing this week. Really? <laughs> yeah. Why? I was kind of hoping you'd come in with another shtick. Yeah, no, it just hurt. I think I, think I, threw, I blew my voice trying to do blah too much or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, I just uh, felt awkward. That's all. Just saying. That's okay. Maybe next week. No, no shtick. No. No shtick this week. Just don't, me. Don't come back next week until you have another <laughs> shtick. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, also joining us today on the couch, to your right, because uh, that's our camera angle, is uh, Mr. AJ Massey. What's up? Um, Massey. 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 And uh, to my right, again, is Mr. Dan Tran. Hola. So those that um, may know these two individuals... Um, AJ being in, uh, with me in Two Crown King and, and Dan Tran from the band Stale Fish. Uh, thanks for coming, Dano. No problem. I mean, I, I, AJ's home team, right? So he's usually around, but... Uh, I think I want to be more home team. <laughs> pleasant cool. surprise to have you down. Yeah. Gentlemen, what's happening? What's new? Please share. Well, stuff. Stuff. Yeah. New. Stuff is always happening. <laughs> no, it's busy. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Wow, We're all that's busy. compelling. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of hoping. That's well, all you need to know. I, I exhausted myself when I came here when I told you what was going on at the shop. So, well, you should have saved it for the podcast. I should have. Yeah. I, should have. What do you think I didn't hear it, so you can reiterate it if you like. Uh, ripped everything apart to run new electrical so I could run all the machines at once. Oh, because you got the new machine. You got the new machine. Yeah. Oh, okay. How much more electrical did you need? Another outlet, or is it, does it take a lot of juice? Basically, takes a lot of juice now. So. Yeah, we're running 220 out into the garage and then all the other adding extra outlets. And yeah. Car hole. Fun. Yeah. It'll be nice. It'll be better next winter. Yeah. So I'm not freezing, but, uh, no. Get some extra electricity in there now. Yeah, totally. It'll be nice and toasty. Mm -hmm. I know you two guys are not sports fans, right? No, but I did watch some of that trade today at lunch. Did you? Dan, I, I thought you were going to go with it, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn yeah. last night. <laughs> <laughs> So a little known fact about Dan Tran, and you recently discovered that he's uh, quite the athlete. Well, we discussed yeah. that. Was yeah. it last week or the week before? A couple weeks ago. Yeah. We yeah. did, eh? Yeah. Ball hockey. Anything. Yeah. Anything. Any, any sport. You Except for it. ice hockey. Hmm. Except for, well, I, I don't know. I haven't played. <laughs> I, I could. He really yeah. probably is. He's a superstar. <laughs> superstar. Just a natural? Apparently. Awesome. I, I had no idea. <laughs> So the reason I bring it up, obviously, today was uh, a trade deadline, and, and I know this is a music podcast, all things indie in London, but, uh, you know, I am a, a diehard hockey fan, so I need to touch on this briefly. Mm -hmm. I won't belabor the point, but uh, being a Leafs fan, everybody knows, and I should have learned to golf a long time ago, mm -hmm. having said that, trade deadline, and uh, kind of went by with, you know, a bit of flurry at the end, but overall it was it was yep. kind of quiet. It seems like all, all the big trades were already done in the in the previous days leading up to today. Yeah. Well, some of them anyway. So, yeah, pretty much. Gabrick was the only big thing that went down, right. in my opinion. But and what was Derek Roy yesterday? Derek Roy went to Vancouver uh, yesterday. Well, you got to be happy about that, yeah. though. Yeah, we needed it. I like kind of address that, you know, because we, we were talking, there was a lot of talk about, uh, you know, Tyler Bozak potentially coming over for... That's right. Part for, of the for Lou and and at one point today they pulled Lou off the ice and you know everybody was like oh god yeah well, here it comes it didn't happen I watched well me being the Vancouver nerd of the bunch uh, basically they pulled him off the ice ten minutes prior to practice because at the end of practice because there was only ten minutes left before the deadline and they were actually working very hard with Toronto to get him over to To but To turned down all three options. So they wanted to make sure he was prepared to right there to sign the contract, like to sign off on it. So did did he say that, or did 
No, it actually came out later. That basically. Oh, okay. Because I, I watched the or listened to rather the Gillis press conference and yeah. and he uh, he wouldn't tip his hand. Although you know it was cool because you listened to the Calgary one and Jay Feaster was was very uh, you open know, and honest. It, yeah, I, normally they can't talk about a player that's under contract, but I think it was the special circumstances, and and because it had already been reported by several media outlets that right. there was conversation about Kiprasov, but they they spoke. He he touched on it, and and you know didn't mince words, and no. uh, and it was kind of refreshing because most of the time you know they're so cryptic with what they say, and you you try to read into it, and yeah, you extrapolate what you want, but truth is nobody really knew. Typically knows, right? No, but yeah, it was it was actually interesting to hear Kiprasov talk about it, or them to talk about what he had said about the whole thing about saying like, no, I want to stay here. My f I just had a new, we just had a new baby. We like living in the city, and at the end of the year, I'm retiring, so I want to stay here. So they were were they even close with the lo Luongo to Toronto? Yeah, they well, from what they 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 pitched three, Vancouver pitched three different trades near the end. Yeah, because basically, uh, Toronto had their uh, eyes set on getting Kiprasov. And then Kiprasov turned them down and just said, no, he wanted to stay. And basically the Flames just said, okay, like we respect that and we respect you for being honest with us. Yeah. And then basically Vancouver and Toronto started discussing it again. And basically they, you know, had three three different trade options and Toronto turned down uh, each one. Like they turned down the first one, then they went back again and turned it down and then went back again and they turned that down. It just wasn't worth it because, yeah. you know, probably they were asking for some key pieces to, to this year's success and, you know. Well, from, from I was I, fine with the status quo, like yeah. you know. Well, I think I think it was Bozak, and I I think it was Bozak and um, Kuhlman or something. No, I think it was just like basically something like they were going to get. Uh, they wanted something like Bozak and um, draft picks for it, but it's uh, you know the best was I don't know like you're talking about you know people being frank. Did you <coughs> did you see the Luongo press conference? Yeah, well yeah. I I heard some of it. Yeah. yeah, where he basically says you know what do you think the the thing is? Well, let's be honest, my contract sucks. It's like that's awesome to me. Yeah. It's like to, for for a player to basically who's getting five point three million every season right now to basically come right to out ride the pine. Yeah, yeah. Basically come coming right out and saying my contract sucks. And if I could, I would basically do the whole thing over again. Well, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Can't fault the guy for signing it, you know. No. no. I mean that's what he was offered, so Yeah. He Can't was offered it and his and his agent basically worked as hard as they could to get him that kind of money. Just didn't know that he was gonna be you know that much of a, a hindrance and like you know he's still one of the greatest goaltenders uh out there it's just now it's they've oh, well, how soon people forget mm -hmm. you know they you went to the game seven the stanley cup finals yep one gold for canada took over the reins from marty brodeur yeah and then you know all of a sudden everybody just wants to sh you shovel a pile of shit on him yeah you know uh, yeah exactly exactly and the people of vancouver are big fans of his just the way he's handled everything right like just he jokes about it. He's like, "Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. It's you know, I'm here to support and da da da." But he just, uh, you know, he was expecting to be gone at the trade deadline. He thought he was going to get picked up, and uh, as he was, you could really see in the in the press conference how messed up he was by the whole thing. Like, oh yeah, what well, like, can you imagine? Yeah, like he thought he was going to go, and as he said, he thought he was a uh, an upper echelon player that was going to be picked, like to go and. Now he's not, so he's got to be like the number it's two. It's kind of like that. Uh, you remember back in grade school when you know all the kids would line up and you know two kids would pick a team. Yep. Yeah. Like that one kid that always got picked last. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. See now, if it was Dan Tran, you get picked first. Pick first. first. I'd be captain. I'd be picking. <laughs> Damn. That, that's that's, that's some, confident. That's some solid bravado going down. Right on. <laughs> All right, well, we got a lot to talk about, uh, but I want to kick this off with a little bit of music. When we come back after this track, we'll get into, uh, you know, tee up the program for today and talk about a couple of things. we got some exciting news for you, some stuff that we want to share. And at the same time, if you'd like to chime in on, on any of the stuff that we're talking about today, get on us. Gary's working the stream. Uh, our intern, Alexander, is going to be here a bit later. And uh, Edie, it, the infamous Brandon Edie, is running late, as usual. <laughs> You know, we uh, our segment was going to be you know angry Edie, and it's slowly turning into angry Jimmy. Because <laughs> Edie's not here, so yeah. but he'll be here. But that said, uh, Jay Rodas here today uh, yep. in the box, and he's going to be taking some photos. And we're looking forward to the live performance with the Baxters here. I got to tell you, sound check was amazing. Really? really looking forward to hearing these guys and sharing cool. it with you. So we got this thing kicked off. I'm going to play some Tandem Eagle. This is Crippled King on the no. London Indie Underground. No. Again, dry bones, dry open both of his eyelids. He's hollowed out and he's shrouded in the darkness. He stays awake until the break of the silence.
Tandem Eagle with Crippled King here on the London Indie Underground featuring Matt Grady and Kyle Ashbourne from Emac Studios. Great track. I know they dropped a new one. Saw it posted up online. I don't have a copy of it yet, but I need to get that into my mitts so I can bang that out to everybody because uh, Cause it's banging. It's banging. So, guess who just joined us? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, wait. That's the wrong camera. Yeah, no. I'm entitled to one mistake. Per podcast, and right? They're all waving to you. <laughs> hey, guys. It's the Baxters over there, chilling out, eating some dude dogs. Best hot dog in this city. It's true, man. And there we go. We're back. Yeah, so they were they were asking. They are like, well, I want to go get some street meat. Is dude dogs any good? And I'm like, man, probably the best dogs in town. You got to go check them out. And so turns out that the, uh, the old guy there, I, I, you know, I can't remember his name. I, I feel terrible because I, I go there you know at least once a week and he's like oh jimmy i don't jimmy he's here like two times a week at least not hammering that many dude dogs but uh <laughs> the guy knows me by name <laughs> hey <-o. laughs> hey uh, so Edie, how are you i'm good you missed out on I'm the good. convo uh yeah. we were talking about hockey talking hockey <laughs> gabrick and I don't have a rhyme for that. <laughs> and Derek Roy. Derek Roy. Terrible. I couldn't get any work done because my eyes were fixated on the TV, but I was so friggin' bored at the exact same time. Yeah. It's true, man. It's like it? watching paint dry. I, yeah. Was I, an announce? I was. By watching it, I mean I was listening to it while playing video games on my <laughs> phone and not answering emails. I was actually sitting in... <laughs> Sounds like normal. It's yeah. a normal way. I was sitting in my living room. I had my one, my other laptop on my, on top of me while I was doing graphics and stuff and was kind of like constantly looking up and looking up and at one point fell asleep just because it was so boring. Oh, and I yeah. woke up and nothing had happened still. <laughs> the most interesting, and there wasn't even that much happened within the last 10 minutes and then the hour following. Yeah. When everything kind of trickled out. Yeah, I mean, really, all that matters is Wayne Redden and Yarmy Yarger are our Bruins. <laughs> That's the only thing that uh, matters. I don't know. Derek Roy going, the, Derek Roy going to the Canucks. Is that guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're only saying that because he went to I, another team. Yeah, yeah, I'm really choked about that. That was the worst, uh, I don't know, PR example handling. of PR handling yeah. by any, but not, not by any one, but by 19 different sports stations. Yeah. How can you get that so wrong and get people so excited, mainly me? <laughs> Uh, and then I go all on, like, all on the socials, just cheering away, stoked about it, and then all of a sudden I look like a fool. Yeah, actually. Sorry, buddy. Need a hug? Yeah, I need a dude dog. <laughs> hey, man, I'm a Leafs fan, so I know how you feel. Yeah. Except I don't even have anything to announce. You could have got the Longo, my... but nobody You could have. Apparently, the the, it came right down to the last 10 minutes, and, and Vancouver pitched a couple of different... Yeah. They, uh, wanted, they, they wanted uh, Scrivens. They wanted Scrivens? Yeah, it was Bozak and Scrivens were on the <laughs> were part of the deal originally, and yeah. they gave three different options, and basically uh, Toronto didn't go for any of it. Oh, well. And now Luongo's looking like a sad Charlie Brown. He yeah. really is. Good grief. Yeah. Oh, sigh. <laughs> but the thing is, now, if he, when he gets the chance to be in net again, he's probably going to be stellar. He's going to want to shut everybody up, right? Yeah. It's going to be like, you know, can't, you can't blame the guy. Yeah. You didn't want me? Let's, let's, let's take this. And, if, and that was the thing. I was, I was listening to, the, of course, because I'm the Vancouver nerd. I had the Vancouver station <laughs> streaming, and they were talking about the whole thing. And it's like, you know, so maybe this was the biggest mistake. Or let's say he, you know, something happens with Schneider, and he comes and Lou gets a net and plays like so pissed off that they take it all the way. And then it becomes the most brilliant hockey thing ever. <laughs> But then everybody will say, yeah, it was a shortened season. Yeah, well, I saw that's the way it's going to happen regardless of what... Yeah, the Leafs are going to make the playoffs and everyone's... <laughs> yeah. One of our previous guests, Cervoni, he, he had posted up on Instagram. It was a screenshot of one of the graphics that they had put on uh, during some of the highlight packages. Um, I think it was from TSN or from Sportsnet. <laughs> and the, the graphic caption was, riding the schneid. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, <laughs> talk hockey a little later, I guess. Yeah. Mr. Jason Rota. I have no us idea now. what any of you are talking about. No, I know. Men it's on skates, good. my friend. Cool. How are you, sir? Awesome. Nice to see you. Yeah. Where were you last week? Uh, <laughs> not here. Where's your? I need. I need a sick note. It's uh, the the doctor didn't give me one. No. No. Do I have to pay for them now? Yeah. You, yeah. you? I think you do. Yeah. Uh, do you have to pay for it if you're unemployed? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can I just have uh. a doctor's note? What for? <laughs> no reason. Womp, womp. I used to pay them to get out of high school. 
Yeah, you can sing it. So I'll, I'll, I'll get y'all. I'll write one out for you. It's uh, you can forge it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just email. <laughs> I wasn't here. That's all good, but it's all good. I'm glad you're here. Looking forward to seeing some of the shots that you take up. So to kind of tee up today's program. Yeah. Those uh, that have been following along will know that we ran a contest called Battle for the, for the Underground, giving bands a, a chance to perform here uh, as part of our weekly indie stream podcast uh, for the Indie Spotlight, which we run at 8 p.m. at night. And we threw it to bands to go out and collect some votes, and the three top voting vote-getting bands, along with a wild card, uh, would win an opportunity to perform live and and one of those bands and uh, the last band because we've already featured three others is a band called the Baxters uh, so they're going to be joining us at the top of the hour for a performance and they're going to run through three uh, three songs rather and then we're going to get into a bit of an interview with them and and as I was saying to you guys uh, I had a, a chance to do the the sound check with them as I always do every week and uh, I was really really impressed oh, man. I'm, I'm everyone really should forward. be stoked for this this band yeah. is incredible yeah yeah they're really really good um, you know sometimes uh it was funny. I was watching The Voice last night. <laughs> okay, Hang so my Santa. girlfriend had The Voice on. So <laughs> I, let, let me let me clarify. Nice, nice I wasn't watching The Voice. I was sitting with her while she was watching The Voice. So, and it was great because, you know, watching the process, and it is what it is, you know, I think all that's kind of sensationalized, and there's way too <laughs> many of these types of programs out there, but watching this and you see them and, and of course their backs are are to the performers and they come out and and all they have to go on is the voice and it was great to see because i i there was one particular um girl that came out to perform and she was a bit of an introvert and she kind of had glasses like i have and uh you know i she didn't really i i don't think you know took a lot of a pride per se in what she was wearing i guess she just came as she was you know what i mean where some of the others you know you could tell that they clearly went to a stylist and you know and got all done up because they wanted to make an impression and she came out and uh, started singing with this fantastic voice and immediately one of the guys you know taps the button i think it was adam levine turns around to, to check her out and it was funny to to see kind of the expression on their faces <coughs> because it was almost like the look didn't line up with the sound yeah you know, so for me that was kind of inspiring, in to at least in some small way, because it, it it's about you know it shouldn't be about the look, and I think, you know, I made comments about this online before that I think sometimes bands maybe spend too much time on on their presentation than they do on their actual music. Maybe and sometimes you said. Maybe and sometimes. <laughs> yes and always. Well, I I won't I won't say suggest that. Um, I don't think that's always the case, but. Well, it goes back to that whole Susan Boyle thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. With, yeah. with Britain's Got Talent, right? Right. You know. Oh, that's true. That's true. You know, just floored everybody, and they're just like... Or the, there was also one, another one that... One of those, again, America... Like, kind of the same style, but the, the really, uh, you know, by standards of today, the very hot chick comes out with the kind of obese dude, and you're expecting him to be doing, like, something dumb, and yeah. they start singing, and the guy just nailed. Oh, I, I saw that. that. Yeah, I yeah, saw I that. Yeah, he was like some operatic looking yeah. dude, yeah. but he, yeah, with the opera voice. Yes, yeah, yeah, I yeah. do remember it that. It looked like Jay Maskus after eating like nine million Twinkies, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> but kind of like just dopey, and also, but then he just starts hitting these notes, and yeah. you're like, "This is messy." Yeah. And it's like it's always good to see that. You always yeah. kind of root for the underdog because it was like the whole Susan Boyle thing when she comes out, and people are kind of like, "Oh my God, this is going to be a train wreck!" And all yeah. of a sudden, everybody, she hits every note perfectly with power, and it's you're just like, "What the." Yeah, and then all of a sudden everybody's like, "Yay, hooray you know, for me for feeling good about you!" You know, whether or not I, I agree with the the whole philosophy of of that type of program, at, at least I I appreciated that small sentiment that you know it was based strictly on on the talent and the voice. And I got to tell you, there was a couple on there last night that was like, "Wow!" Like yeah. it was kind of taken back. Like the, this is a great performance. Did I? I'm a very like I I don't watch any of those shows. The only one I do watch is America's Got Talent. And I'm pretty sure I showed you a video at one point of this guy, Landau Eugene Murphy Jr., who won the second season. You love this guy. Man, he's you are in love with this incredible. Man. I am in love with this man. Uh, he was this, like, car wash guy. He, he ran a car wash. And he came out there, like, tall guy, dreads, looks like Richard from Sailfish. Looks identical to Richard from Sailfish. Really? Yeah chewing gum and whatever, and they're all mocking him and whatever, and he comes on there and sings just as well as Frank Sinatra and then ends up winning it. The guy was a crooner. They all thought he was going to be some, like, yeah. rapper. Yeah. And he was a crooner, and he was incredible. Wow. Yeah. 
So I am, I, yeah, I've showed you thousands of times. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, you have. More so because he looks like Dan. <laughs> or <A> Richard. Richard. <laughs> well, that's cool, though. I, I uh, you know, like I said, I, I appreciated that small sentiment. And, and uh, you know, it's. It, I guess it's unfortunate that a lot of the industry is dictated, you know, by the, you know, these types of programs. And when I say a lot, I think, you know, the major label stuff and, and the pop stuff. And they're trying to cultivate all these artists that. It's quick cash. Yeah, well, that may or may not possess the ability to write their own songs, right? Yeah. Um, but you got to give credit where credit is due, and you know somebody is is able to you know take some creative license with a, with a song and make it their own and in a, in a compelling way. So you know, I try not to be too judgmental about it. But you know, one of the few times that I've ever watched that program, and I was, yeah, you get, you get yeah. a nice surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Um, by the way, my name is Jimmy James. If I haven't introduced myself already, for those that may be tuning in for the first time, uh, London Indie Underground is brought to you by the Vault Recording Studio. We broadcast live uh, every Wednesday here from uh, 6 until 9 p.m. I hope you enjoyed the, the Indie Flow pre-show this evening from 6 until 7. We posted up a screenshot of the playlist if you'd like to go and check it out. We've been live tweeting it. It sometimes is a, a bit more difficult because we've got to be sitting in front of the computer. And uh, today, unfortunately, I didn't have uh, an intern or a co-op student to help me. <laughs> <laughs> my Alex's. Co- yeah, my, my double Alex's. Uh, Alex Junior, or Junior, as we've been calling him, he's got a concert tonight. He's going to see Billy Talent, so good for him and i think alexandra she'll be around about eight o'clock she's a very busy lady but uh we're always uh pleased when she can join us and, and yep. help us out with some of the stream stuff that said uh if you'd like to chime in on the conversation once again gary's running the Ustream stream stuff yep. uh feel free to send us a tweet at london uh, underscore indie underscore ug or uh, hit us up on facebook and uh, I've been urging this to bands, too, because a number of you have sent in music to us. And, and, you know, forgive us if we haven't yet got to your song. Believe me, we want to get to it. And, you know, I'll use the adage out of sight, out of mind. The archive is getting pretty big here. So if you'd like to hear one of your tracks, there's no shame uh, in sending us a quick message and saying, hey, do you want to spin this for us? That said, one of the uh, the bands that has done that was Derek from Stale Fish. And he's like, hey, can you get some fish on? I think we play some fish every week. But, uh, <laughs> but that said... Uh, I got to get it for him. And, and <laughs> not to mention the fact that Dan Tran is uh, from Stalefish is here too. So, Dan, what do you want to hear from the new album? I'll throw it to you. Mm. You got any country? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, do I like it dreaming. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's do that. Is that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Like okay, that. well, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> it may have been. It? So, <laughs> <laughs> talk, <laughs> talk amongst yourself. No, I, I, I do have yeah. it. It's it, Here's the thing I, I had everything organized perfectly, and then iTunes went and messed everything up. The new iTunes? Yeah. I told you. I know. <laughs> well, I didn't have any choice, though. Man, it's the worst. I know. So my library got all messy. Yeah. So I'm looking in the file now where everything is supposed to be, and Awake and Dreaming isn't, isn't there. Isn't there is a way that you can get it back. I have a step-by-step Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to have to throw to something else. I apologize. Throw away. Throw away. So why don't older, we... Older. Why don't we go... Uh, why don't we do this? Let's, uh, let's do the Conquest. This is Stalefish. Conquest on the London Indie Underground.
Still Fish with the Conquest on the London Indie Underground, featuring Mr. D from The Salads, John Coombs from The Next Best yes. Thing, and uh, Matt Drake from Dodger. Great track. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun working on that one, and also an exquisite horn section that was brought in. Um, some players that play with uh, with Derek, the drummer, uh, who's involved with, uh, what is it? Grand Theater. Grand Theater. Grand Theater. Yeah, they're the part of the uh, the concert yeah. uh, concert group there. So Tony DeLuca on the sax. Tony DeLuca on the He's sax. The oh yeah. A sax machine. A sax machine. <laughs> there you go. Wordplay. <laughs> so Edie, we uh, unfortunately we missed you last week. I know you had the uh, what was it the classified show? I did. How was it, by the way? It was sold out, and it was amazing. Some of the best production I've ever seen yeah. uh, on that stage. That DJ the musical? ran a clinic earlier that day. Yeah, know. yeah, he yeah. did. At, at DJ Long Look Wade. DJ IV at Long Look mm. Wade. Uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, it was great. Sold out. <laughs> long day, long day. So we missed we missed you, and more specifically, we missed Angry Edie. Because yep. we, we've been building this thing here, so we've, we've wanted to give you an opportunity to come to, on and rant. To come on and rant. But there's a problem. What? Nothing has happened in London to rant about. To rant about. There's been no Occupy London. Because <laughs> that was my favorite one. You love that one. Yeah. <laughs> we should just Things make it happen again. Things Edie loves. Yeah. Mm. Occupy London. So you, you, you got nothing to beef on. I don't no know. I, I have stuff to beef. Yeah. Just, you know. Oh, are you calling me on the spot right public? now? Well, I'm, oh. I'm suggesting that. I, I'm giving you it an is opportunity your segment. here. Well, yeah, but I didn't know. It was a 7.30. We should, we should get you a song. Okay, well, we can wait We can song. wait a little bit. We can wait a bit. Yeah, you got to get me queued up or something. Yeah. Make it special. Oh, romantic. okay. Just yeah. kidding, because then the last time when we did that, it was awful. We yeah. talked about the iTunes store. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, right. <laughs> well, well, I mean, it could have been worse. But don't well, not bad. If Dan, if, if we're gonna, if he's gonna get his own song, though, it has to be something. As soon as he hears it, just get some pissed off. Yeah. You know what we should do? <laughs> some pump up too. You know, <laughs> you know what we should do? Pump up too. <laughs> we should, but we should make you a little, uh, you know, a ju just a little commercial. He's alert. angry. He's yeah. angry, Edie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could do that. Yeah. A lot of cartoon voices. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, he's angry, everybody. <laughs> Well, we, have the, we haven't <laughs> we have the technology here, so we should do. We, we can should, rebuild him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, we'll we'll turn that over to you. We'll, we'll do that. We'll do that a bit. It's a little premature. Cool, cool. I need another beer. Poke, poke the bear as much as we can. Okay. Yeah, just <laughs> don't poke the bear. <laughs> That's from hockey too. So we got a, a couple of things to share with you. Mm -hmm. um, so joining us next week, and I had been plugging this previously, but we're going to post it up, and I got the official confirmation today. The Mercy Now is going to be coming from Toronto to join us. And, you know, we've been featuring some of their tracks. There's a bit of a London connection for me. Uh, one of my best friends plays in the band, but they've been looking to come into this market for a while, and we got a lot of great feedback from, from people um, when we've played them. So they're going to come in and share some stories, and one of the things that I talked about previously is uh, Russ, who was f uh, the front man from that band, who was formerly in Shikasta, they had an uh, opportunity to play with James Brown. Yeah, man, I so want I'm to talk to him about that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I am looking forward to that as well. And they've been working on some new stuff, too, and they're a great band. So um, looking forward to them. The following week, we'll be joined by Justin and Greg Wolf uh, from Beards of Prey and also owners of uh, The Early Bird and The Night Owl. And there was an announcement that was posted up today. Edie, would you like to, to chime in here? Yeah, we, uh, well, we being the early bird, uh, mm -hmm. whoever is not familiar, we were on, or sorry, uh, the Food Network show You Gotta Eat Here filmed an episode about a month back. Uh, it's going to be aired on the Food Network on May 17th. However, we were chosen as one of the season two favorites, so they are coming back. Uh, we actually record it this week, Monday and Tuesday, uh, to do a... Christmas special to air at the end of the season, which is going to be pretty badass, although it's going to be really, really funny filming Christmas mm. in April. So <laughs> do you have to decorate the place? Oh, yeah. We're yeah. decorating and everyone who... Uh, I'm going to uh, be there. Jen asked me if, yeah. I, want, if, I, if yeah. I want a table. I'm like, okay. We're asking everyone to come in their Christmas attire, so I'm giving away six spots uh, to be in the filming. So you'll do an interview, you'll get a free meal, but you need to get decked, uh, decked out in the halls. Can I the come? Halls out. Yeah. Can I go? Absolutely. Yeah. Sit with me. I will. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty great. Um, maybe, maybe I will. Oh, do you need a Santa Claus? We could probably have a Santa Claus. That should be pretty funny. a job. Yeah. <laughs> that, would be, that would be hilarious. I Jay, can, I, I we could probably work that out. <laughs> yes. And Jay, just so you know, I have a Santa Claus suit. You do? Oh, I it's do. like it's fate. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, uh, every year, my, our miracle. friends do this thing called the Santa Crawl, 
yeah. all, all throughout mm -hmm. London, and we go to all the bars, but you can only go if you're dressed as Santa or Mrs. Claus. Mm -hmm. So there's usually like 65 or 85 Santa Clauses all hitting the streets of London all at nice. once. So I awesome. actually have a Santa suit that you can borrow if, if oh. you go in. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm excited oh, about this. I'm going to make that happen. I'm yeah. going to make that happen. <laughs> That's great. Done deal. Okay, yeah. cool. But yeah, I know that they're looking forward to coming on the show as well. Uh, they just kicked ass on Monday at Call the Office, Beards of Prey. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, I'm, uh, I need I to get... Awesome. I don't have... Oh, fuck yeah. I don't, I don't have. Otherwise, I would play some Beards. Well, you should tell me what you need. Well, I'm telling you now. All right. No I, I, no, I did try to bring it in for you, but yeah, well, there was errors with my That's right, that's right. So it's drive. not that you didn't try. We, we had technical yes. difficulties here, but um, but certainly we'll uh, we'll get that into the archive and we can spin that for you. And if you're not familiar uh, with Beards of Prey and, <coughs> and the, the Wolf Brothers, formerly of Thine Eyes Bleed, and I've uh, been kicking around these parts for a long time. They've Sinclair. toured. S and Sinclair, who... Do, Sinclair, they, they, Sinclair they had a reunion Sinclair show, right? Sinclair had a reunion on Saturday called Yeah. Things. Wow. So, I mean, that we'll have a lot to talk about because these guys have kind of been around and seen a lot. Well, yeah, Justin has to with Slayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know. Enough said. And there's going <laughs> to be some stories there. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And then we're working on a couple of things, too. Um, um, we're looking to book uh, Mercedes and Morgan from Kitty. Uh, we're just trying to iron down a date. Morgan was here last night. And as soon as we can get a date confirmed, they're going to come in and share some stories uh, about their experience uh, with Kitty and touring abroad. Uh, it's a great story, actually, when you uh, when you hear it. And, and if you want a little bit of the back catalog about Kitty, if you uh, dig into our archives on our YouTube channel, if you go to www.youtube.com slash London Indie UG, uh, we were privileged to be joined by Gord Pryor. And Gord was uh, the producer that, that helped in the early stages of Kitty to get, to get them going, and uh, he shared some of the stories when they were on tour and whatnot. So it's uh, I'm I'm pretty excited to to kind of dig into that with them and and find out some of that backstory. That's the perfect time for me to bring in this video. I've been telling them I was going to give them to them a while. Which video is that? It's them. Uh, I went to high school with them. I've been friends with them for a while, but I have a video of their very 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 first concert at a yeah. battle of the bands at Saunders. Oh, you have that? Yeah. And, and one of the teachers got made because they, 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 yeah. they sang that song and you can suck <laughs> yeah, a dick or something like that? Yeah. Dude, I want to see that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about that like back in the day too. Like, Yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. I don't think we'll be able to post that up. No, no, no. <laughs> We've just, just been talking about Just it. for our own personal viewing pleasure. And then we're looking to connect with, uh, with Scott Hansberger. Uh, who is the director of Music Ontario, reached out to us and uh, very, feel very privileged to have connected with this gentleman and, and he's very much looking forward to coming in on our podcast and, and sharing some of his insights about working with, uh, with Music Ontario, which is great for some of uh, the bands that may be listening because I'm sure he'll be able to, uh, to provide you know, some direction on you know, where to look for support. Uh, you know, whether it's obtaining grants and that sort of thing, which is really what we're looking to do. We want to provide um, some high-level information to our listeners. Uh, and although we do realize that, you know, the, a lot of casual casual listeners, rather, may be listening in, uh, we know there's a lot of bands out there that are looking for support, some support, and that's what we're looking to, uh, to do for you. Cool. And I think maybe we should get to some music. Have we had any requests, Gary? No, it's actually quiet. A little quiet. Uh, is it? <laughs> Of course, Grady would just tell me to tell you to spin the new eagle because he just emailed it to you. He did? Yeah. Okay, well, let me see here. If you Double all want eagle. Double eagle. Talk, amongst, talk amongst yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Physically, flip, a yeah. tandem eagle. Flip-flops, neither flip nor flop. <laughs> That's it? That's all I got? That's all you got? That's I miss flip-flops. <laughs> soon. No, it's not soon. It blizzarded. The blizzard did it. Blizzard. Yes, we did have tomorrow? disgusting snow today. Yeah, what the hell? Are eh? you really just talking about the weather? You no, you can't complain. We're Canadians, man. We're Put Canadian, on some dukes, eh? Put on a two K. <laughs> no, but serious. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I I won't complain about the weather too much. I didn't have to shovel very many times this year. No, that's true. You know? And, you know, it's a bit cold, but I know when it warms up, it's going to be hot. And then you know what everybody's going to do? Complain They're going to complain. The first week of June. It's not the heat, it's the humidity. Yeah, exactly. How many times do you hear that? <laughs> I say it twice a day. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got this email here. Let me, let me download this because uh, we can premiere this for these gentlemen. I've been looking forward to this, actually. Have you announced our other thing yet? No. Sweet. No. 
yeah, we got something else brewing up, you know, and I and I posted some cryptic stuff about it. Uh, you can maybe read between the lines, but until it's everything's confirmed, which it pretty much is, but I don't like to make assumptions on stuff. So that said, we're we're gonna have some some cool cool news coming down the pipe. That's all I'll say. Cool. 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 Cool news. All right, let me see. I think I've got this. Bear with me, folks. It's not the radio. It's just a podcast. So we're kind of laid back, you know. Try to keep this thing rolling, but... Uh, it's true. I've operate also, at our own pace. I've also noticed that I'm the only one drinking a beer right now. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. change that here pretty soon. Okay, well... I seem to have misplaced them. Uh-oh. <laughs> Man, I'm not doing very well today. flip-flops then. Yeah, I know. I Seriously, I used to hate them, but I love them. I didn't take them off until... It was like November twelfth this year. <laughs> wore them, wore them every day through the first snowfall. That's really, I can't. Yeah, I, just can't do it. <laughs> I can't that's do it. I'm, I've never been a flip flop person myself. But that's, you know, it, when you have really large feet, you wear flip flops. Everybody says like, what? "Wow, you got really big feet," and you're just like, you "Shut up." You know. Oh, and then they say, you know what they say about guys with real big feet? Yeah, big feet, big shoes, big flip flops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, it gets kind of annoying. So yeah, I don't wear them. I just I, we went to Jamaica and I I like took Vans with me. <laughs> yeah. Just like yeah, I get more Vans. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Vans. Yeah, I found cons, it. Cons, cons, cons more. I don't, I don't like it. the sound they make. I like slip-on the shoes. Flop sound. The, the thwapping. Yeah. Look at these. I have flip-flops that squeak. These really? Van dress flip-flop or yeah. oh, yes. slip-ons. Leather. See? Hit See? the track. <laughs> mine, mine, like look, they look like slippers. Yep. Yeah, I like it. It always looks like I should have like a bathrobe on or something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just lounging. Yeah, like just perma lounge. You should, you should wear a bathrobe like every Wednesday. No, you oh, know what? I have a Star Trek bathrobe. You could be the dude. Did yeah. you get I one of those? The new ones? Yeah, well, you could yeah, be yeah. Dude. yeah. Nice. I got it. I got it. Star Trek bathrobe. Yeah, I have a Star Trek bathrobe. Yeah, I was gonna get the Doctor Who one, <laughs> but they don't make them in for I don't tall tell people. That to everybody. So. And, you know, but I just told it to everybody. Yeah, it's out there. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? I found it. So let's jam it. Oh, hold on, I got a tweet that you have the Star Wars bathrobe. Oh, okay. Well, thanks you for can't that. play music till you can. Yeah. Can you do that while you're doing that? <laughs> no, probably no. not. No, it takes up the bandwidth. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so this is uh, some new Tandem Eagle. Thank you, Grady, for sending this over. This is Beast with Two Backs on the London Indie Underground. It's so good.
Right there. Tandem Eagle, Beast with Two Box here on the London Indie Underground. Relatively new band, although you may be familiar from the previous weeks when we showcased them. And when Grady and Kyle Ashbourne were down here and talked to us about their various projects, including that. Any idea when they're going to be playing? No. No? I know that they're trying out some people and getting some stuff together. Very cool. I bugged them for uh, about doing some shows, but nothing yet. You know, it's funny, Grady came on and, and you know, he it kind of preemptively told everybody, he's like, all right, I'm, I'm one of those guys in the studio, you know, I, I really work on, you know, fixing my vocals and stuff like that, and, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it was because he wanted to temper people's expectations, but, yeah. uh, from when they see them live, but, you know, d judging that guy from, at, at least from my interactions with him, I would be inclined to think that, you know, they would be hammering this stuff before they even take it to a show oh, anyway, absolutely. so that, yeah. you know, when they actually do deliver on stage it's going to sound awesome great tone and very you know queens of the stone age elements like early caius for me super yeah which is uh which is refreshing because there's been a, you know so many metal bands and i love metal as much as the next guy but it's nice to hear some of the the new you know kind of rock and rolls kind of coming back oh absolutely a bit of a resurgence oh, man, there's uh, a huge resurgency of, of that kind of stuff right now yeah. which is great there's we're on the cusp of so many bands that y y are about to come to market yeah. too yeah. Uh, one of those bands, uh, and we're going to be featuring a bit of a promo here from week to week. Um, you know, one of our followers, and, and you may uh, be very well familiar with him, Randy Burke, otherwise known as Albie, uh, is venturing onto a new project where they're going to be documenting the, uh, <coughs> the creation of a new band right from inception to first live performance. And they're called Heart and Lungs. So you can follow them on Twitter. We'll post it up. Um, but they're going to be joining us next week um, for a bit of a check-in, if you will. And they'll be posting up a bit of a teaser video. Uh, they've got basically production that's following right through this process. And as I said, right from the inception, the very first band meeting to... What do you keep saying, inception? <laughs> You're messing my flow up. Uh, to the f the first rehearsals, to the you know the first uh, initial writing process, and all that kind of stuff, and it's going to be cool to see, you know, kind of this band go from you know just a bunch of guys just getting together to the to the final product. So we'll be like I said, we'll be featuring that. We're going to be touching in uh, with them, touching <laughs> them every touching week. Them. We'll be we'll touching touch them. them all week. We won't be touching them. It's pretty cool. Though, we'll that be touching them. I yeah, think I think so. I think it's awesome. Making the band, kinda. Yeah, exactly. It's really it's a really good and fresh Where's way at uh, uh, self promotion yeah. and pre promotion, you know, pre promotion, pre -promotion which is something huge. that bands don't do. So no, anymore, so really, they're going to so. document this, and it's going to be called "From Terrible to Tolerable,", to tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. is the best name for whatever. I think so. Yeah, I think so too. I mean that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a great. Well, I think it, I think it'll be cool, cool to see and out of the box. You know, people I I think maybe don't appreciate what it means to be in a band and and to have a relationship with a bunch of dudes and to try to make that work, right? Well, and especially you're when you're in a band gals. with Albie and two dudes, just me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that guy is like makes up for like two. Well, he parties like three dudes. Apparently, Albie just interviewed Matt Grady on the toilet for that thing. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I, heard, I, heard, I heard. Yes, I heard about that too. <laughs> yeah. And apparently he had some not nice things to say about yeah. a couple of the members of the band, too. We'll get into that a little yeah. bit later. <laughs> Part of their marketing stuff, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll check in with them. We won't touch them. We'll just check in with them. So coming up here shortly, uh, we're going to be joined by a gentleman in the Baxters. We'll give a little shot here to see what they're up to. In the oh, that's, that's us. us. Oh, it'll be awesome if we turn it and they're all doing the fucking uh, butts. No. There they Yay. are over there. Yay. So they'll be joining us here in a few minutes for a live performance. Shake, if they're all <laughs> shake, yeah. And we'll get into a bit of an interview with them too. Have them join us in the control room. I think I just dropped my no, phone. Man, I am not. Yeah, well. it's, it's hanging. Back. It's hanging. I can see it. It's just Thank hanging. You. I tell you, not having much luck today here with technology. Bear with me while I pick up my phone. There we go. A little bit too much dead air today. Seriously. Yeah. I know, man. I'm not rolling as smooth lights. as I normally I'm do. Not, I'm not even, you know, I can't even put a sentence together right now. <laughs> and yeah. you're going to go on a, a tear on Angry Edie. And yeah, I'm going to go on a tear about how tired I am because <laughs> of the stupid gym. 
<laughs> are you still hey listen are you still going to that pump class or whatever? i have done it that one day that i came in here and, and not once again since. <laughs> excellent and, and never again uh i keep saying that i'm gonna do it every wednesday but then i don't that my friend is championship commitment yeah right <laughs> i remember doing aqua aerobics once with a and you were of, like, good at it. Ladies. It was hilarious. <laughs> and you were good at it instantly. Aqua aerobics. <laughs> I won aqua aerobics. <laughs> <laughs> you won? <laughs> There's no. <laughs> just, just getting out of the pool did is winning. Did you participation medals? Yeah, yeah we did. Riddance, purple. <laughs> purple yeah, it was to finish a good life challenge. And I got a cozy. <laughs> like a water bottle. Cozy. I was going to say, you got like a beer cozy <laughs> from a good life? A little, yeah. <laughs> little knitted tea so, cozy because he's with a bunch of old women. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Put this over your teapot. My that's what? Racist. <laughs> oh, that's racist. That's <laughs> racist. <laughs> uh, fine. We, fine. Fine. Incredible. Sh- should we should we tell the story about or you weren't with us on uh what was it, Saturday? Or was it Sunday? No, Sunday we went out for sushi. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that was fantastic. So so we Sandy go Sandy Yeah. So, <laughs> oh dude. Right. So so my, my girlfriend, she's amazing. Uh but sometimes she doesn't catch herself in, in, in things. And that's okay, and I think that's you know that's why everybody loves her. But so you know we're we're at we we just finished our meal, and we're, the conversation came up asking about we went out for a birthday dinner, and and somebody asked her you know what what how was your birthday dinner? You guys went to garlic, and you know we're in a, a sushi bar, with you know a bunch of Japanese people that run this They're place. Chinese. They're Chinese. Okay. Well, regardless. I I don't even know if there's any Japanese owned sushi places in town. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, thanks for the clarification. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not racist. I just <laughs> didn't know the difference. I just assumed that they were... That's racist! Uh, okay. <laughs> so, they, you know, in asking Sandra, you know, how, how the meal was, and she says, it was delicious! <laughs> like, belt it. It belts oh, yeah. it right out. <laughs> and, and uh, you know... Didn't mean to, but... Didn't yeah. mean to. She's trying to be cute and funny, but... Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, she's done that <laughs> so many like times. Sandra, oh, my God. <laughs> And so, yeah, so now our nickla- nickname is Sandy Ricious. Sandy Ricious. Sandy Ricious. Yeah. And then one other time we were out and we're sitting beside the table with a bunch of kids and she's dropping the F-bomb like crazy. Same restaurant. Like, yeah, same restaurant. That happens every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a reason that her and I have been friends for 10 years. Uh, yeah. She's great. Uh, I like her. She's, she's my she favorite drunk person in the whole world. <laughs> Norman Rubinos! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I hope she's listening in. Me too. Yeah. She, I know she's at work right now. I don't know if she's yeah. able to tune it in. She can she can watch it later. Yeah, that's true. Moxie's, however, is racist. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Side note: We're talking about dinners. <laughs> you weren't there because you didn't come to this birthday dinner. No, I couldn't. But Our we were at Moxie's dinner, yeah. for uh, his and yeah and Sanders birthday, and my girlfriend orders a teriyaki noodle or rice, rice bowl. bowl. Comes right up, hands everyone their food, gives the rice bowl to Dan. Puts in front of me. <laughs> and a rice bowl for you? I was like, no. And she's like, you sure? <laughs> she didn't say, are you yeah, sure? She was just like, oh, was like, yeah, oh I got, man. I, I got a steak. <laughs> you got the most white meal ever. Steak with seafood on top. <laughs> <laughs> with the side wow. of mashed potatoes. Yeah. Man. So, yeah, Moxie. That's a great story. <laughs> Raises. <laughs> All right, well, listen, we're going to spin another track here. And then we're going to get these guys set up for a live performance. So uh, we debuted this last week, but I'm going to spin it again for them because it's a brand new track from a band called The Divine Right of Kings. This is Dead Ends on the London Indie Underground. Let's 
divine right of kings with dead ends here on the London Indie Underground. Yeah, great band. Yeah, great I, band. I, as I said before, I really dig. I still like the some of that just in your face metal. Yeah, like it's just and that these guys just kill me every time. Like yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed these guys here. Yeah, they should, well, I just heard the bit yeah. of the tone there. Yeah, it smells like dude dogs over there, though. <laughs> yeah, because they all came in with a bunch of dogs. <laughs> and now it really smells like dude dogs. Dude dog, yeah, that's not good for anybody. <laughs> we should put some kind of... I do have dude. a scented candle right beside you there, so maybe yeah, we'll stick it yeah, in. Yeah, the well, the, the problem is I'm getting a whiff of uh, dude dog and then vanilla. Yeah. And it's kind of making me think... I'm, it's making me hungry. <laughs> for cake I kinda, and I kind of want a dude dog. Yeah. <laughs> all right, as I was saying uh, before we got into that last track here... We ran a contest, gave bands a chance mm -hmm. to perform live on our podca podcast. And one of those bands is a band called The Baxters, joining us here in studio. I hope you enjoy. We're the Baxters, and this is called uh, St. Helen. So we're the Baxters from London, and this uh, next song's off our new LP coming out 
It's called Abraham. Alright, so this last one we're going to play, it's, uh, it's called uh, Theseus. Hey, you, no one asks us why. 
inside HBO fantastic Oh no, she's so automatic Oh no, here we go Slow-mo, she's so automatic Slap. Now I gotta go, gotta get, get my neck snapped kid wanna get up, but the kid gets down Boom, the bomb blows, the breeze brings a cloud to earth The sounds of birth are loud and hurt The crowd disperses, leaving just the ground and dirt and still the kid wanna get up, but the kid gets down And now I'm alone, I know it's only a matter of time Quick, I gotta run, I'm in and out of my mind I needed an enemy, you be giving me an enemy, it's fine kid wanna get up, but the kid gets down An enemy lines, my enemy finds me cover blow Too tired to fight back, too deep to run alone Too deep, I should've known, too late now Because the kid wanna get up, but the kid gets down Two Crown King with Automatic here on the London Indie Underground. Going to do a bit of shameless self-promotion, but if you happen to be a fan of Two Crown King, or maybe just getting to know them for the first time, I've been play drums for that band. We just dropped a new album yesterday entitled 1604. It's available on iTunes now. We posted up a link to it yesterday on our Facebook page. I encourage you to check it out. Never been so proud to put out something in my life, and uh, you know we really worked hard on this album, and i and I got to give credit to, to all the guys for kind of pulling together and uh, I think it sounds awesome, and I'm looking forward to uh, to spinning some more here on the uh, the London Indie Underground podcast. We'll get into it some probably next week. Wanted to give uh, people an opportunity to check it out before we started slamming it. That said, we are now joined in the studio by the Baxters. Great performance, guys! That was Thank awesome. Uh, you, I got a couple of text messages and a few. Uh, tweets there during the the performance suggesting that uh, you guys were, were awesome sounded great too so uh, I want to thank you guys for coming in so let's do a roll call here I'm Scott I'm the lead singer I'm Scott. Justin I'm the bassist Taylor the drums Quentin guitar Alex guitar and backing vocals awesome so let me ask you first question how long have you guys been together over a year now yeah, over a year about yeah. a year and a half yeah yeah year and a half year and yeah. half yeah okay right on so. Have you guys known each other for a long time? How did you come together? Like, what were the circumstances that it's led you to play in a band? Alex and I have been, you know, playing together since we were, like, kids. That We've been dating weird. for a few years. <laughs> yeah, right. I was going to say, that sounded kind of weird. We've been playing together. Uh, Quentin and I, I knew him from his band playing the victim in Texas Hold'em. And then I saw him in the halls at Music Industry Arts. And yeah, we've all kind of, like, been playing with each other without knowing for, like... Four or five. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> for like for like four or five years, like we've all been band in bands that played with each other. And okay, like, it's and like a, I, yeah, a mutual friend thing. Yeah, going on. and then we just kind of came together here in London in uh, at our program, Music Industry Arts at Fanshawe. So how many are in Music Industry Arts? All of us except him. Yeah, just most okay. of us here. he pretty much is in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spending an awful lot of time. I just there, skulk right? around the halls, you know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like me too. I, I went to school. I went to Fanshawe for uh, computer engineering. Mm -hmm. Um, but I spent an awful lot of time in, in the, the labs yeah. and kind of got to know some of the faculty, so I kind of felt like I was emeritus, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yes. what I feel, yeah. yeah. Right on. So a year and a half, so um, are you guys just finishing the MIA program? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah, a coming month to close, left. So. Okay, so those of you that don't know, uh, MIA is Music Industry Arts, mm -hmm. uh, which is at Fanshawe College and is one of the more accredited uh, programs for uh, music industry arts across Canada. So. Um, now, are, are, where are you guys from originally? I'm from Listowel, Ontario. I'm from Fergus. From uh, Fergus? I'm from Alliston. I'm from Arthur. And I'm also from Listowel. Okay, so a couple of you guys that kind of came here together. Yeah, and we're the yeah, country we're, boys. We're, yeah. We live yeah. out in the boonies, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. very cool. So, if, uh, in not speak, let's say you met somebody for the first time and you kind of wanted to describe your sound. What would you say to somebody that you're 
your type of music is. Your brand of rock, if you will. Don't look at me. <laughs> I always, I'm always curious to know what bands think that their own sound kind of is, you know? How would you bill it? That's, that's a really it's, hard thing to do. It's kind of like if Monster Truck and Thrice were in a fist fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Like riff, riff rock, maybe? Well, or? Yeah. Riffy. Riff rock. And lots then of we'll have like a delay deep, on, yeah. guitar, on guitars. And we'll have like a deep kind of deep emotion and stuff on choruses, but then we'll just break out into like a pure yeah. ballsy mm -hmm. riff part. So whatever you call that, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> we don't know what it is. Alternative riff rock, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a good one. That's refreshing, Talk right? It's, it's uh, I mean, certainly some throwback elements. I'm sure you, you would agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, I was, you probably heard me speaking on the podcast earlier, but, you know, there was a, a great metal movement here in London for a very long time with some top quality metal acts emerging and kind of putting us on the map. But now it seems there's a, there's a big shift um, and it's a lot of the, the rock, you know, the throwback rock roots that are coming back into the music, which, you know, for me is refreshing because that's kind of where I cut my teeth. Right. So mm. when I listen to you guys, I, I kind of hear a lot of those elements there, which is great. Uh, and at the same time, too, I was telling you this earlier, a bit of Mars Volta in there in terms of your vocals, thank which you. is a yeah, very, very a, impressive. That's a really nice compliment, so mm -hmm. thank you. No problem. So what do you guys got coming up? Cool. Uh, well, it's <laughs> an album, like an, an LP. Mm -hmm. So we've been I don't, working our asses off for the last probably six months um, on a 10-track LP, and that is dropping on the 20th of April. On the twenty. Call the office. Yeah. Call okay. Having a release show. Yeah, we have a release it's gonna be show the poster, but yeah. 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 Let's check it out again. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We're is. super pumped on <laughs> this. Yeah. Our friends okay. at Still Life from Hamilton are great, and they're yeah. gonna be playing with us that we're, night. So we're, we're very excited, excited for them to come out. As it's well awesome. as Texas King from London. The lineup is stacked. It's a yeah. really sick lineup. So Texas King, I think we featured um, their track Probably. Paper Tiger. Oh, yeah. 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 Great yep. song on our podcast. And recently, I attended. It's hard to see. It's a bit of a distance. I need some thicker glasses, I think. Uh, so recently I attended the Strike the Right Notes seminar, uh, which was hosted by Fanshawe College. Are you guys familiar with this initiative? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, is it Ben from Texas King? Is that his name? Uh, it would be Rob or R Phil. Rob. 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 Yeah. Apologies, gentlemen, if you're listening. <laughs> okay. uh, but one, one, of the, one of the gentlemen in that band was, was actually performing um, before... The uh, the the movie. Probably, probably Jordan. Probably Jordan. Oh, it was probably yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Then, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah I walked by that. No. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so you guys are familiar about with this initiative, right? Yeah. Do you know what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. So, for those that that haven't been following along, uh, what's essentially has happened is they've recognized that London there's a, a hotbed of talent in London, and they've recognized that we have uh, an opportunity to grow not only the music industry here. Um, but you know whether it's private sector or otherwise, but to create some tourist dollars as a result of some of the compelling music that we have in this market. Mm. So the Arts Council and City Council, Music Ontario and Music Canada had, had all kind of collaborated, and Music Canada and Music Ontario now have submitted uh, recommendations to the Arts Council. Uh, Arts Council conducted a very thorough uh, analysis of, of our market and they're looking at you know things like what what assets do we have here you know what kind of venues do we have what are the demographics of people that attend music so what we're trying to do on this podcast kind of dovetails onto what's already happening but it's great because i i kind of feel like we're not you know the the lone voice here there's a, a number of people that want to contribute to this right mm -hmm. and if you guys have been listening along you'll know that the philosophy here is that we do want to give some insight and some feedback um, to you know to not only the casual listener but you know the musician maybe the aspiring musician right so you having come from you know a musical background and now being in the the music industry arts program what you know regardless of, of the level that you at but and no doubt accomplish from what we just heard but what kind of insights would you give to uh, musicians that you know right now are, are in London or in, in this market and are looking to you know there's varying levels of goals, right? Some would, you know, maybe want to, maybe the, the bar set here, right? Mm -hmm. But there's certain milestones along the way, right? So what are some, what's some advice that you would give to people based on your experiences that you've had living here in London? I would, uh, I would tell them just to get on the circuit, like get on the circuit with all the venues and just play as much as possible because I think we've gotten um, most of our opportunities just from playing a lot. 
and frequent because um, people go to shows here, which is cool. Like people just regular regularly go to call the office, regularly go to I don't know, London Music Club, and uh, you'll run into someone who's going to connect you with someone yeah. else. So it's all about, it's all about networking and finding yeah. the right yeah. people. So right, and if you if you want to be a part of the scene, then like go to shows as well. And yeah, meet yeah. people and meet bands and say, hey, like your band is awesome. Like, do you want to set up a show sometime? Yeah, and yeah. We've done that. I'm sure we've done that yeah. countless times. Just from being at shows, yeah, yeah. not not playing, but. Just yeah. meeting the other bands. And the online stuff, too, of course. It's yeah, kind yeah. of the social dead horse everyone's seeing Social media is right key right now. So. Yeah. In London, that's huge. Like, it's it's really big right now. Everyone, I don't know, everyone sees someone else's post on Facebook just because it's all totally mutual right now. Well, there's, yeah, there seems to be a lot of mutual friends and cross-traffic yeah, yeah. through social media mm-hmm. uh, accounts. And it's great because you see people that are getting behind, you know, the, the <laughs> scene more so than the band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is, a, I... I think one of the key things that uh, will be our success here going forward and I've said this right from the beginning that our biggest strength in this market is the talent that we have here and uh, you know we've been so privileged to have so many great bands including yourself send us in tracks it's a it's refreshing and people might not have heard otherwise unless you go to a show as as many people do go to shows there's a lot of people that don't Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason there's a lot more options nowadays to people for entertainment than there was in yesteryear, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Case in point, a laptop right in front of you. Yeah. I was gonna say, <laughs> you can waste media, away. Like yeah, it's it's a new thing. So. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, what are um, you, some of the bands that you guys normally play with? Uh, every band on that bill. Yeah. Um, yeah. Texas King. Texas King about a billion times. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Geronimo. Oh, Geronimo. <laughs> yeah. We right. Well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you share. You share a ago, member. So. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, um, still life from Hamilton. Yeah, again, yeah. So. Who else in many times? Just like a billion. Times. Well, uh, the one place that we've definitely played a couple times uh, at this point is uh, the guest room, actually, which is oh, kind yeah. of this local uh, venue run by Kieran from Oh Geronimo mm-hmm. out of his basement. And that's okay. actually really cool because there's these really yeah, like was, was intimate that. shows that are like there could be only like 20 people there, but it feels like it's packed because it's so small. Yeah. But at the same time, like it gives you an experience to really like feel like you're in it at the you know what I mean you like, had, uh, people. yeah that competition that you had uh, yeah to uh, get us yeah. on this yeah every band has played the guest room mm-hmm. like every band that wanted to play your thing the, the it's guest. just and a great opportunity venue. to rub elbows with the people that not only are making the music but that are there to see it too yeah for sure yeah and the venue in our in our music video is the guest room mm-hmm. yeah 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 and a music video for Theseus which is on YouTube <laughs> it's a good plug. Thank you. Which on YouTube? Hey, it's what it's about, so, guys. Yeah. yeah. It's so, all right. So, if if people wanted to connect with you, you mentioned that social media is important. Mm-hmm. Where oh, yeah. where can people find you? We have a Facebook account, Bandcamp, um, Twitter, Twitter. It's all uh, the ba- it's all slash the Baxter's Band. So Facebook yeah. slash the Baxter's Band. Facebook will answer first. Yeah. Especially if you go to Bandcamp too, because I believe the first EP is up for free now. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can get and we try be. to we try to push our bank our Bandcamp as much as possible as far as people hearing our music yeah but if you want to get in touch with us it's all like it's facebook band camp doesn't have a way to uh there's no email or anything mm-hmm. so one second i'm just <laughs> looking up here in my library i'm getting the next song queued up here <laughs> cool, yeah. okay so you've got the one ep that's out or coming out rather on the 20th and you have one available for free now we, um, have the, yeah, we have an EP page. available right now, and the LP is coming out the 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So EP's five songs, and then the LP is it ten. Is ten songs. Ten yeah. songs. Yeah. Okay, and um, you guys record on MIA students. I'm assuming you've done it all DIY? Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. We did all of it ourselves, both, yeah. both of them. Yeah. It's great when you can do that, because then yeah. you can make Save it. Save a lot exact. of money. Yeah. You do, but it takes more time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you know why? It's because you're too close to the project sometimes. Yeah. At least from my experience. Yeah, anyways, no, that's, we're, that's, we're, like, we're all perfect. Hitting the yeah. nail on the head. <laughs> Especially a singer. <laughs> right, okay. So uh, what's what's next after the 20th? What's uh, What are you guys Festivals, planning to do? Festivals, hopefully. We, yeah. we want to gig as much as possible with that LP. Yeah, like, push it. Push it at every show and try and sell as much, but... Um, yeah, I'd, like a festival would be awesome. Like yeah. Just this summer, good summer shows. We're yeah. trying to get out of London too. Yeah, that's yeah. the big thing. Trying to break in the London bubble too. Yeah. Mm. Anywhere. Well, that's uh, there's a lot of great shows that are take place in southwestern Ontario. Mm-hmm. Koi mm-hmm. Fest would probably yeah, be yeah, one that yeah, I would Fest suggest to you. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you guys are on Sonic Bids, right? Yep. 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 So, if those that don't know, Sonic Bids is a tool that you use as a band to submit bids. 
uh, to play for a show. Now, I guess, you know, the, the drawback is that you have to pay mm -hmm. to apply. The um, bigger ones, yeah, you got to pay yeah. some money. But, um, simply put, that's oftentimes the only way that you can perform at these shows mm -hmm. unless you're either a, a repeat performer. So, you know, it's kind of like Canadian Music Fest. Yeah. If you've already played Canadian Music Fest once, um, oftentimes it's a, you know, you're invited to play again as a part of a repeat performance. You don't often have to, to reapply. But certainly, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're active on that. Yeah, because I, I think that's, uh, you know, a logical step for you guys to, to try to get into to some of the the local area stuff. And, and what do you think? Like, do, do we really have a festival here in London that we can call a festival? We're there's starting one. <laughs> well, yeah. I, there's that. Guest what is it? Bud, there, there's Budweiser? Yeah, there's a, there's a Budweiser New Music Festival coming in September. It's with uh, Admiral Entertainment. And, okay. Um, they ha it's three cities. It's Sudbury, Barrie, and London. Okay. So I know, I know, Interesting I know spread. that that's coming to, to London in September. But other than that, there's pretty much Gusto Fest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we, I mean, there's Sun Fest, and then there's, you yeah. know, Taste of London. Yeah, and yeah, there's, sure. you know, all these things that take place down in Victoria Park, but aren't necessarily centered around music. Mm -hmm. Like, it, the music is, is kind of the you know the side attraction yeah. Victoria yeah. Park is wicked too you oh it's amazing have a wicked festival mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but they, I guess they don't like, and London I, has I've a great music scene too so. and you know and we do have a great folk festival that happens yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know perhaps there needs to be you know there some people that yeah. push yeah yeah I think right because there's just so many good bands here that and, and there's some great venues. Some would argue whether or not we have enough venues here in town. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. should, they should stop calling them similar things. I think that should that's that's an <laughs> idea. You know, we got London Music Club, and London Music Hall, and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, London Music to, Venue will be the next I'm one. I'm going to the wrong one. <laughs> no. Yeah, tell me about it, man. I'm yeah. London Indie Underground and yeah. Indie yeah. Underground. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad APK is back though. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for he sure. For went sure. Across the street. But yeah. yeah, that's good too. Mm -hmm. Venues like the Night Owls. Really yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, Great food at the Early Bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh absolutely. Gosh, well, you heard us probably talking about it earlier. They, yeah. uh, early Bird and Dude Dogs, that's all. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude yeah. Dogs. That's all you need. Dude <laughs> Dogs and Early Bird. Dude so dogs. I do have to mention something there a little earlier. So. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. we oh, got to oh, show no. this. Story. I, I wanted you so to this, say this. So this was, this was pre- Dude Dog stench. This was pre-Dude uh, Dog. <laughs> Oh, oh, it was pre dude. Yeah. yeah, so this this gentle <laughs> this gentleman over here. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Killed my bathroom. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. It my Baxters so came and went. <laughs> Destroyed it. <laughs> like a swarm of locusts. <laughs> it was one of the plagues. <laughs> it's okay. I brought I went in armed. Febreze, man. Yeah, yeah Febreze. I had some like Febreze. Alex. Febreze what was and it that matches I said? You need to have some better. Shit etiquette. Shit etiquette. Shit etiquette. Shit etiquette. Shit etiquette. Yeah. That's compelling. That's yeah. rich. Feels that's right at home. Rich Beautiful and compelling. Oh, that's the kind of stuff we share around Excellent. here on London in the Underground. You, know? yeah, you, you need to know this stuff. Yeah, you need it's to all know when. Uh, if you're going to get in a band, yeah. you got to know shit etiquette. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to know that it doesn't exist. Man, I don't give a shit. You just talk. Exactly. Well, it turns out you did give a shit and you wrecked it. But at the same time, yeah. Yeah, five guys in a van does not a pleasant smell make. That's the fart yes. box. Yeah, because you, you eat cheap food when you're yeah. on the road. Oh, yeah. or no food. Yeah, or no food. 7-Eleven becomes your friend, like yep. nachos and cheese. Jerky, and you know. <laughs> next thing you know, somebody's <laughs> shitting their pants, and it's worse than a hockey team. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Gary, do you have any questions for these gentlemen here? Why would you wreck our bathroom? Oh, well, <laughs> no. uh, it was a strategic move on my part. <laughs> <laughs> this will show them. You wanted, you wanted to make an impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. called hype, okay? <laughs> Buzz. <laughs> Wait till the Baxters come. He'll ruin your bathroom. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, listen, I want to thank you. Uh, for a couple of things. First off, getting behind our Battle of the Bands contest. Mm -hmm. uh, it was great to see the response that you had and, and how you, you, know, you activated people to, uh, to come and vote for you. Uh, and I'm hoping that you, know, you had your fans that tuned in today and were able to you know, witness that great performance. And I also, I also want to thank you for, for supporting us and what we're trying to do here and, and coming in and performing for us today. No Thank you. Thank it was great. You it was, it was a great, great set. So yeah. We'll be archiving this for you so you'll be able to go and check cool. it out after the fact. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah. For those listening in, if you'd like to see our archive, uh, it's on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash London Indie UG. 
believe we've got 27 or 28 weeks worth of podcasts yeah. up there, including a number of great performances from bands like the Baxters. Yeah. Uh, this one will be uploaded tomorrow, so I encourage you to go and check it out if you'd like kind of a repeat. And last but not least, once again, how can they get into contact with you? Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Bandcamp. And the Baxter's Band. Yeah, the Baxter's yeah, Band. Yeah, yeah. The box, the box, the box. And check out our the album, box. Equinox, box. which drops on the 20th of April. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Call the office, right? Yep. 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 Call, yep. I'm going to put this, I'm, so I'll put the poster up during the next song here Sweet. so That's people good. can see awesome. the info, okay? Yeah, thank you. So awesome. thanks again, guys. So we're going to cut to another track here. Uh, this is the Raspberry Heaven with the Gauntlet Run on the London Indie Underground. Raspberry Heaven with the Gauntlet Run here on the London Indie Underground. Hope you enjoyed the Baxters. A lot of fun. Great band. Great performance. Can't wait to upload that and check it out again after. I was really impressed. I told you. Right. Yeah. I gave you warning. You did. Fair warning. Fair warning. Fair warning. So fair I gave warning. you fair warning earlier. So yeah. I hope you got something prepared. Before we get into that, too, I want to introduce a couple of people. So Alexandra, our intern, is joining us here finally. Hi. I know you're a busy lady, and I appreciate you. Two more weeks. Two more, more weeks. weeks. Yeah. And then she's she counting on the days. need to give a doctor's note. She's counting on the days. No. <laughs> no, she's giving her notice. I gotta bring a doctor's note. But Joe, I am her doctor, and it's totally fine. Yeah. You don't have a doctor. <laughs> she's my doctor too. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, she's not. Is she's she? not sticking up. For uh, <laughs> Unexcused absence. I don't I'm know writing what that you down. Have. For that. <laughs> Alice is gonna no come in with, us, what with I a big batch of I quit cookies. <laughs> <laughs> And also joining us, Robin Crosby, works at FM96. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks. 
Yeah. Surprised to see you. Yeah. I hope I'm not ruining any. <sighs> totally. I mean, Completely I have no business being here. I just now. enjoy. Yeah, no, 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 no. You're you're going into a little random <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we have an open door policy here, and we welcome everybody that wants to come down and either sit in or view. We just set up a new um, monitor that's in the lounge now. So when you're hanging out in the other room, you can actually see what's going on because otherwise people were kind of coming up and creeping and <laughs> looking at us through the door over here. Yeah. And it was a little unsettling. Felt kind of like we're in a zoo. Yeah. yeah it's like, oh, look There's some that. badass arcade machines coming here too. Yes, we do have I'll be some able to talk because I'll just be playing Gauntlet Legend. <laughs> yeah, we are getting night. some arcade machines. So coming this week is Rampage. Yeah, Audrey just got a line on Rampage. Yeah, Rampage. Oh, it's a done deal. He's, yeah. he's going to yeah. grab it. And then we're getting Gauntlet Legends. So we got to go into Ajax or to Whitby to pick that up. So it's been a, a bit of a wait on that one. And then we have eventually Mortal Kombat and Tetris. London Indie Underground Arcade? That's Is right. Is that like the next venture? It's going to like old school throwback. Noah's Arcade. <laughs> going to have the, we're getting our own little tokens. Yeah. Yeah. All the interviews are done in the arcade. <laughs> Suck it. And we want to get a pinball machine eventually. But yeah, I don't know. I don't oh, know the office has a Back to the Future pinball machine now. That's but amazing. it's right beside the door to the patio. Wait up. Hold up. Does their bank machine work? No. Okay, because I'm Sometimes not sure it does and the other <laughs> day. <laughs> exactly. What's more important? <laughs> well, they probably. Uh, back to the Future pinball? <laughs> Do they, ta they take debit at the bar, right? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> no. They don't take debit. It's called the no, office. And know. their bank machine doesn't work. And their bank machine Rarely. works nine out of 300 times. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it definitely didn't work when I was there on Saturday. I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not a business major, but that might not. I, <laughs> I don't, I'm going to look into know. my own line of a bunch of ABMs and put them at every venue. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The EDP you make a fortune. Seriously, yeah. make a fortune. We'll the only problem is, is that I don't e really have ten thousand dollars to keep them stocked. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ETM. <laughs> the ETM. The EDM. The EDM. Oh no, wait, I don't like that term. <laughs> <laughs> don't, say that. don't say it. Don't say it. Or should I say womp womp womp? <laughs> All right. So we're gonna do this now. Yeah. While you guys were talking, while you're talking to the Baxters, I heard you talk about Sonic bids and right. uh, about festivals in London. And they brought up this thing, and I'm trying to remember the name of it, but they said it was going to bury Sudbury in here. Uh, the Budweiser New Music Festival. Yeah, the Budweiser New Music Festival. All of those things are scams. Fact. Have you ever heard of a company called Supernova? I have. Okay, Supernova runs all of these. Oh, really? Yes. They have branched out a... Oh, is this something <laughs> I shouldn't talk about again? <laughs> no, go for it. Sometimes <laughs> things are off limits. It's on the FM96. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I talked to them about that, too. Uh, so basically, Supernova was this company from 10 years ago, and it's owned by... And I'm not being racist here, but it's two elderly... I'm talking 75-year-old Jewish people who have no background in music whatsoever, but they hire out a bunch of people. Basically, they gather a bunch of high school bands. They don't listen to them. They try to get as many as possible onto a single show, charge $15 a ticket, make, X, make bands sell X amount of tickets, or they don't play, and offer them up all kinds of these wondrous prizes like money and recording time. And then when they win, they don't get anything. So basically, you hire out, and I, I mean this could be a cool business model, to make money, but it's not doing anything for the music community or the scene. All it's doing is encouraging high school bands to sell their souls for nothing, and and it's taking advantage of these kids. Basically, the Budweiser Music Fest is an offshoot of that company. Uh, I was actually approached about it. They don't have a show booked in London. They've gone on advertising campaigns about how they're it's coming to London. It's coming to London. I asked them where. They said venues TBA. I gave them. I asked them which two venues it was going to. Oh, it's still TV. I'm like, no, you don't have it booked. London Music Hall? Yeah, we're talking with her. No, you haven't, because I haven't heard anything of it. Regardless. Sonic Bids as well. Uh, yeah, you have to submit there for festivals. That's not how actual submissions are dealt with, including Canadian Music Festival and all those others. It's all about who you know and what you can get on. Maybe one out of one million no bands. No question. Maybe one out of one million band submissions get accepted. All they're doing is grabbing your money. Promoters that put up opening slots on Sonic Bids, they just want your $15. That's all it is. That's all it is. That was me touching the that cord. That was you? Okay. But, uh, yeah, sorry, those things really piss me off. I mean, uh... It's kind of uh, like those modeling, you know, yeah, for the 14-year-old girls. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, 100 bucks here, 100 bucks there, and, you know, we take See, care of them. See, it's tough, because unless you have those contacts, and uh, that was my point, I mean, unless you knew somebody, 
if you don't have those contacts, right? But you don't need the contacts, and this is something I've been advocating to bands for years. How hard is it for you to go to Google and type in the name of a club in Kitchener, find their contact, call the bar? That's what we used to have to do before the mm -hmm. internet. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that's what you did, is you called up the bars, and they would say, cool, this is who books it, call them. Granted. Done. Now, what about the festivals, though? Uh, well, I mean... That's a little bit more difficult, right? It is, and it isn't. I mean, a lot of them have specific... Because there's some Content coordinators, like Scene Magazine, you, or not Scene Magazine, fuck Scene Magazine. Uh, <laughs> scene Music Festival. Oh, yeah, Sorry. <laughs> Angry it's, it's, Edie it's, time! It's, I can say what the fuck I want! The, in, the oh, opinions okay. expressed by Angry Edie do not necessarily reflect those in the London Indie Underground. Uh, Scene yeah. Music Festival, I mean, there's there's three actual content programmers for it, and they're all people that everyone knows, and it's listed on the actual website. Email them, they'll say the same thing, and it's done by submission with money. However, if you're not accepted, your money is returned. Different than Sonic Bids, where you pay... You're never going to hear from anybody, yeah. and your money's out the window. You pay, yeah. you pay now. And there are bands, and I've seen it, that have dropped, like, they set budgets per year for Sonic for Bits. For Sonic Bits. Yeah. Wow. And it's like, you're just kissing three grand goodbye. That could have, you know, you could have recorded a new EP with that or, or even bought onto a tour, heaven forbid. That's difficult, man. It's yeah. difficult. I know some, there are some of the bigger festivals, I know that they have a lot, because they even itemize, well, at least give you the impression on the main page before yep. you apply it says that there will be so many bands that come from sonic bids right so x amount distributed yeah. through the entire festival right i mean like canadian music week i'm a big part of that considering i run the bovine in toronto i did all the programming for this year right and i've done you know i've worked with them for 15 years the way it works for cmw for the majority is uh a label or a company will come and put together a showcase hand it to the the the, the uh venue that's your night. That's your billing. You want to get on, you get on. You you reach out to a, a black box or somebody, and you try and get put on one of theirs. It's it's who you know. And, I mean, there's a thing for saying, and I don't want to sound completely out of line here, but if, if, if you haven't made any of these connections, then I don't know, maybe you're not ready to be on a festival. And that might sound kind of harsh, but in a way it sort of is applicable. Yes and no. Yes and Everyone no. deserves a shot. Right. But if you haven't been laying the ground roots, then what makes... I don't know. I'm that's just the same like as in any business. Right, yeah, it right. absolutely is. I mean, at some business. point, you got to take it out of the basement. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I'm not saying don't take it out of the basement. I'm saying... No, no, no. But what I'm <laughs> suggesting is, you know, you spent the time working on your music, and your music maybe is really tight and ready yeah. to go, right? And now it's time to branch out and network and connect and go to shows and talk to people and find out who's running it, uh, find out who the players are, and... You know, introduce yourself. That's There's no harm in doing that. what I mean. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, uh, the reason that it aggravates me is because the bands who are just coming out of their basements are immediately dropping money on these festivals, yet they haven't toured. And I don't mean a tour. I mean they haven't played twice in their own city, let alone played elsewhere. Right. And these are the bands that are emailing you, asking you for like, asking a Asking me for uh, and, like, a no-cover show with a guarantee, and they don't want a headline. <laughs> okay. That's part of their learning, though. It absolutely is part of their learning. But when I come to them and say no, no, and no, then it becomes a whole fiasco about how they're self-entitled because they're a band and they've been doing it for X amount of time and blah, blah, blah. But it's all about business relations. And, people and that's how it is. with people who they're familiar with. So no one ever gives you money the first time you meet them. Like, y you have to work up to it mm -hmm. um, and, and, and have that business transaction happen. And the more you get to know someone, the more they like you, and the more they're going to talk about you, and the more you're going to get on those those. You're going to get you're going to get asked to be on those. Absolutely, things. that's true. I mean, you don't need to be a signed band by any means to get on these festivals. No, you just need to put your time in and make face. Yeah, pretty much be a working band. Be and a working hit the band, scene, like you know. And, but you that's the way I mean. You should be. Period. Yeah. If yeah, you're in a band, completely. I don't understand this. This another thing that gets me. I don't understand what's the point of you being in a band if you don't want people to come see your band. You want to play this music, but you want people just to be there. I have a big problem with booking a local band, regardless as how good they are. If they can't draw 20 people, there's something to be said about a work ethic. Every single, say, a five-member band, 
if each of you don't have five friends or five family members who will come out and support you, there's something wrong there. And it's not me being cynical again. It's just kind of the way it is. Or the way it has been, in my opinion, anyways, for the last 13 years that I've been doing well, it. Well, that right. has to do with likability. It has, yeah. <laughs> like, if, if, if you, like, maybe you're not telling anyone that you've been working on this band for so long. And that's and what then, I don't understand. Where, where does the pride come from? Mm -hmm. You want to be in a band, you want people to hear your music, you're not doing anything to show people. You just want things. You're just uploading it on Bandcamp and, and letting waiting it go. for the yep. checks Waiting for the call in. to come in like Beaver. Right. Yeah. And that's not how Batline yeah. to Usher. Yeah. yeah. So that's my rant for tonight. That's and cool. It, I appreciate it. And it's that. honest. Like, that's the whole no, thing. No, it's man. honest, too, and, it, and it's great. I mean, uh, you know, when we spoke about to Sonic Bids earlier, and, and, you know, we were talking about the festivals and, and that kind of stuff. And but the, you, you know, know. What I was going to say, if you're somebody who's not comfortable with going out and talking yeah. to people or the whole thing, then hire somebody. Exactly. Who if, you yeah. want, if you want this that badly, and you're pumping the, mu the, the money into your recordings, or even not even into, like, a studio, but you're pumping the, the money into equipment at home to write the tracks, to record them, and to, to put them out there, and, you know, even coming my way and getting T-shirts and trying to do all that stuff, and then you're not doing anything, well, then basically just do that. Hire somebody out there. Well, there's I mean, a, there's I mean, a ton the of people. At the same time, it doesn't even need to be face-to-face. -face. You could have a brand new track and send it off, which you should be doing is sending it off to whoever you think should hear it. Yeah. Going on to labels or agencies, websites, finding emails, spamming them. They need to hear about you somehow. Mm -hmm. If they respond with, it's cool, man, we'll keep an eye on it, then you just keep up with email correspondence. And if they don't answer, you write back and say, hey, man, here's our follow-up track. What do you think of this? And then eventually a dialogue can progress online without it even need being a intimidating face-to-face -face yep. where you sort of build your friendship Based, and then, on and then based on persistence. Based on persistence. Yep. And then we're playing here. You know, we're yep. playing in Toronto. Let you know we're going to be here at this day. Maybe you can make it out. Yep. The whole bit. Yeah. And it's it, it actually goes back to that same. It's the same. You have to follow the same old school steps that have always been there for every band. The only the only difference is is now you have everything in basically in your lap. And that's what I. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, social media and everything should make things a lot easier for people, but they still need to do all the grinding and hard work that yep. every band has ever done. Mm -hmm. Ever, yeah. and when you're not amalgamating the two, you're, there's something flawed there. Yeah, and not to sound like the old crotchety musician dude, but <coughs> like seriously, when when we when we were doing the lame thing and the trigger happy thing, Kiff trigger happy, how amazing is that? Yeah, our phone bill. Oh yeah, like, to book shows across Canada. Like you know, I was living in Oshawa, and we were like lame was touring out west, so we had to call. We were calling out to Edmonton to, to, to talk to the booking agent to do the West part of the tour. You can, I don't even know if you still can, but you can buy books and libraries that are categorized by year of contacts for all of the promoters yeah. and record yeah. labels, and it's an encyclopedia of industry folks. Yep. Yep. And the you would go through and finger it yep. to yeah, where you're going. Yeah, there's one that's published every year. It's yep. the big book of contacts. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I've been in it for 12 years. Have it's you? also <laughs> really easy, too, on LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn's yeah. great, too. All that stuff, man. It, yeah. it should make it so much easier for them. But... Robin's going to give me a LinkedIn but tutorial. Yeah. Yep. The, the problem with it, though, is because we have all this, it's also created well, a massive laziness. Absolutely. But at the same time, as soon as the band puts up their band camp page or their whatever, all of a sudden, that's when the entitlement comes. Oh, you should check. Yeah, well, we got a page. It's like the same thing. But little do they know, it's like go to the gigs even. And like the guy like Baxter's were saying, you know, they go to the gigs, they show their faces, they meet yeah, the they're bands. they're hustlers. Those and they guys go up, are... Yeah. Alex plays in like three other bands. Yeah, I've had every, I had every one of them play within a week, in a week span, yeah. and it was amazing. Yeah, which is crazy because that's one of the things I noticed when I moved here, when uh, like the amount of bands that everybody plays in, yeah. like you know I had I was playing in a band with guys where it was impossible to to just set up rehearsals because like the bass player was playing in three other bands, the guitar player was two playing in another like another two bands, and one was going on tour, and you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, good, yeah, I just moved here. You know, it's crazy, but it's awesome that they've got this work ethic and they can arrange yeah. everything and they keep going at it. Well, that, I mean, I, I'm, that's always been my thing, and I tell Jimmy this all the time. Like, London's got the talent. Yep. It's got a lot of the talent. We it do. Just that's our strength in this totally thing, it just right? needs, uh, It just needs more work ethic and more community-based. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So there my you have sentiments, it. exactly. All right, folks. We'll come awesome. to the end of another great podcast. Yep. I really enjoyed today's discussion. Even mm -hmm. though I was kind of tripping over my words a bit earlier and dropping my phone and yeah. messing up the touch and, <laughs> and saying some inappropriate things <laughs> unknowingly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it was a good podcast. I was, was going to say, uh, for myself, I didn't swear. 
Really? That's huge. You're turning over a new leaf game? I would Trying. like to apologize for yeah. saying the worst curse word that only Satan should say on the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. I just watched that episode of The Simpsons today. <laughs> right before I came here. <laughs> I would like to donate all of my funds to the charity for cursing children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We, we can go off on Simpsons all night. Yeah. And we will sometime. Yeah. Well, we can get Not the Simpsons tonight. soundboard that night, though. Is there? There's got to be, right? Mm-hmm. I, told, I have like a gig's worth of... <laughs> of samples? Yeah. <laughs> Giddy up. Wave files. Oh, really? Uh, this could be bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should do an entire angry Edie just by taking different words and just yeah. making an entire like sentence. You know what? It. You know what we should do? We should just get you to come in and read off a bunch of words, <laughs> but with different like tone and timbre and inflection and stuff and piece them all together. Angry Edie Stephen yeah. Hawking's rant. <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, no. Come on. No. We, we have the technology. Well, that we do. Yeah. All right. <laughs> let's uh, let's burn this down here as we do at the end of every podcast. We need to take a moment to thank the sponsors. Bam. Jay Rota. Jay Rota Photography. Hey. The bearded gentleman sitting on the couch over here that doesn't have a lot to say this week. That was uh, had an unexcused absence last week. No doctor's note. No doctor's note. Uh, London's premier photog. He's actually going to be joining us this year. Those of you that have been listening will know that I'm going to be co-hosting uh, the Jack Richardson Music Awards, which is just around the corner, uh, as well as moderating the music seminar in the afternoon the day before. And I want to get into that a little bit before we sign off for the day, just because there's some, some important information that I think you need to have. Uh, however, Jason is going to be coming with me uh, and is going to be shooting both Official. events. He's he's the official photog for the Jack Richardson Music Awards. Not just your own personal paparazzi. Yeah, no, that too. I won't just be following Jimmy. I'll be following everybody. Don't forget to take pictures of his food. Yeah. So he's got. He has to be at the seminars the day before, which will be great. Uh, We'll we'll get into a bit of discussion uh, with that, and obviously Edie's going to be there as well. I will not swear at that panel. You won't. (laughs) I'm moderating, so I'm I'm really in. I don't have a cut button or anything. Side note: Let's. uh, If anybody online wants to start a little betting pool on this one, what day is that? That's the thirteenth, right? Thirteenth, yes. Is that a Sunday morning? It's a Saturday. Saturday morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Betting pool. (laughs) Total betting pool. But we're you don't come until the afternoon though. Two or one. Two. Yeah, one till two thirty. One Does somebody want to send me this? Because I don't have it. <laughs> I will forward it to you. Yeah, I think didn't you you RSVP to the uh, to the Facebook event? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right there. Clickety click click. Barbara trick. So, congrats, Jay. Yay. Looking forward to working with you that yes. day. That said, if you happen to be in a band, you need some photos done. Yes, Instagram and Vine and all this other stuff. That is available through social media are, are neat tools that can help you capture a moment, um, but they're not going to offer you the same level of service that you can expect from a professional photographer. So, And I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he immediately goes to the lowest common denominator. Yeah. And I'll do it for next to nothing. Yeah. Free your best offer. <laughs> not nothing. I'll take some of your money. I said next to. I didn't say yeah. for nothing. Nothing <laughs> in life is free. No. Nope. Right? Yeah. Uh. So listen, get out of the yep. information is right. <laughs> cable. <laughs> <laughs> information is right on your screen. Uh, Submission Academy Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, run by two of my good friends, Stephen Jane Poulin, okay, to Dundas and Egerton. Great school. You know, week in and week out, we've been talking about their program. <coughs> they've got a kids program uh, that's really taken off right now, and the they've got a competition class that <laughs> competes. Uh, you know, throughout Ontario, and are, and are really meddling right now. These these folks are uh, they're killers, man, they're killers. So if you uh, happen to be interested in getting involved in in a different sport, something that's fun and exciting, that's definitely going to get you in shape. Um, believe me, these two people are. I've never met two people more dedicated to their craft, their school, and their students. And uh, go and check them out. You can build some confidence through hard work. Submission Academy. FullColorCards.ca, my buddy Scotty Fairmont, a.k.a. Scotty Finlayson, uh, does some great work, did a bunch of cards up for us, just did some cards for my other project. I'm going to be playing in a Motown soul band I had posted up, I think a couple of weeks back, or if not a week ago, called Marcellus Wallace, and we just got some business cards done up through Scotty, and they look like little cassette tapes, and they are by far the coolest little cards that mm-hmm. I've ever seen. This guy does fa- fabulous work. And if you need some cards done up, he's the guy that you want to chat to. Fullcolorcards.ca. Last but not least, Chirper Brains Custom Screen Printing. If you can think it, they can ink it. Run by Mr. Me. GB, Skinny Fat Guy, Yay. Mr. Gary Baker. 
Yeah, that's Gary, and, so and embroidery. And embroidery. Oh, I got to throw that, that in now. Don't forget the embroidery. So was that? And you got two. You got two twenty in the garage now, man. I'm, I'm running two twenty, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going big time. I can now listen to a radio <laughs> and work at the same time. It's pretty awesome. So his embroidery machine takes 220 volts. No, 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 no. The, uh, the new oven. Uh, the new oven is 220 takes, yeah, volts. Yeah, the conveyor oven takes 220. Down. So when I say you yeah. got 220 in the garage, gee. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny to me. Yo, it's just, yeah, a lot of things are funny to me, not funny to anybody no, else. But it's all good. Anyway. But yeah, so, so now you can do We're doing shirts, hoodies, embroidery, hats, too. You know. Anything that you want. If you can itch it, we can stitch it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound good. You can etch Never. It sketch it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, it's not I don't think you want stitches there. <laughs> yeah. Nope. We even do a... If you can itch it, we can stitch it. Yeah. Uh. Also, some home surgery now with the embroidery machine. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, the <laughs> stupid things that are going through my mind right now. Yep. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I shan't comment. Okay, so listen, uh, I alluded to uh, a couple things that I wanted to share with you about the Jack Richardson Music Awards. So first off, bands that are listening right now, very important. You may have seen a link that I posted yesterday. They're looking for bands to submit uh, tracks to be reviewed from the panel uh, as part of the morning session next Saturday. Not this Saturday, the Saturday the 13th. Now I'll post up more information about it so you can see it. There's an email address that they'd like you to submit your demo or your, your current single to. And if you attend the session, which is going to be from 10 until 12, there's a panel, including Juno uh, winning producer Dan Broadbeck. Um, there, there's a couple others, Simon Larachette, uh, who runs the Sugar Shack recording studio here in town, and a few other prominent and uh, accomplished individuals that will listen to your track and give you some feedback on it and some constructive criticism or some praise. Uh, so you definitely want to get your stuff in there because believe me, that these people, they know what they're talking about. They've been there, they've done that. They're in a position to give you some high-level feedback. Please send in your track. So I'm going to post up the link for that. Then in the afternoon, I'll be moderating the panel, which will also feature Brandon Eady and, uh, and Scott Hansberg from uh, Music Canada. There's going to be a couple other prominent people that will be featured there. And we'll be giving some feedback and guidance much like we do here on the podcast, only with a bigger forum and with a, a panel of, of experts. Uh, I'm no expert. I just happen to be some guy. But uh, I'll be moderating the experts, including Brandon, and including Brandon Eady. Uh, you know, I'll make sure he doesn't swear. He doesn't insult anybody. I won't there, there won't be anybody. any angry Eady at this panel. But you want to come in and check it out. I, I think it's going to be a great time. I can be very informative and calm when I need know be. You, I know you can. I know you Just can. get so angry. <laughs> <laughs> Urge to kill rising. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sitting next to Bob Breen this time, so that'll be different. Better. <laughs> I like Bob. So do I, but the last time I did this, we were on a panel beside each other. Oh, really? And it was just the most amount of butting heads. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Bob's going to be coming on our, our podcast. Is he? Awesome. Yeah, so you, you'll have to be here for that. I play to argue with Bob, huh? Tomorrow. Yes, you do. You Tomorrow. play? Yeah. Uh, let him know he was working last time I talked to him he was in Toronto working at Revolution Recording yeah with the Marriott uh, with the Marriott's right yeah. so I sent him a quick email and he said yeah as soon as I get back I got a couple of things to sort out maybe after Jack after the Jack Richardson Music Awards we'll get him to it cool cool alright guys well thank you everybody for coming really thanks for having it. us thanks for tuning in folks uh, thanks I, Jimmy no thank you man <laughs> no thank <laughs> you thanks Jimmy thanks man hmm. So pass in. Okay. <laughs> so uh, please join us next week, where we will be joined by the Mercy Now, which are coming down from mm-hmm. Toronto. Yay! As I well really like that. as Angry Edie awesome. will be joining us again, and we'll b- also be joined by the newest members of the new band Heart and Lungs, which we talked about at the top of the show. Yep, three out of four of them. The three out of the four yeah, are going to be sh- showing up. Trav, Trav isn't coming. I don't know. I figured he, he, was he might be working. Yeah. He might be working until eight or nine o'clock. And so I'll work on a shtick by then. We will have some information about this for you next week. Mm-hmm. But essentially, their project is called "From Terrible to Tolerable," and we'll get into that more next week when they when they join us here live in studio. So awesome. I'm going to end this thing off with a band called The Offensive Senses. This is Gated Youth. Thanks for tuning in. This is Jimmy James broadcasting live from the Vault Recording Studio in Adelaide and Princess, London, Ontario. Have a good night. Good night.
know I'm right or wrong At the end of this Survival is in victory Existence is in truth Praying for extinction Is the bride who's getting you Maybe in tomorrow We will find a better way To put the past behind us Yeah.